Vertigo is a solution to two problems in the world. One is urbanization, the other is malnutrition. Um, and it allows people to grow food against the sides of their house or on their roofs in spaces where there is otherwise no farmland or garden areas. Through a lot of our own research, um, we read a lot about Will Allen, um, who is uh, sort of starting this idea of um, a vertical, vertical uh, sort of skyscraper idea of putting vertical farms inside of large cities, for example, in Chicago. Um, and then that got us to thinking about, well, what if we can move that idea into the developing world? So we had to really um, dig for information about materials we're going to use for our prototype, um, how we're going to make them, how we're going to manufacture them, how to ship them. The first few days were interesting. Um, we brought in, I think we had enough supplies for three sort of semi-prototypes to start, but before we set them up, we wanted to just speak with some people and get an impression of what people thought of it. Um, so I was working with a translator who the NGO set me up with, and we were working out of a healthcare clinic in the middle of the slum, and I was able to just speak with the patients who were coming in and out and ask them questions about nutrition, um, show them pictures of our prototype to see if it's something they would be interested in using, and sort of get an impression of how much money they would have to spend on that if they w wanted to buy one at a subsidized cost. So from that background research, we were able to pull together a pilot. Um, we didn't go in thinking that we would have an actual pilot, but people were so excited about the research that we were doing and, and um, us being there with this idea that they, this group of women actually organized themselves and said, you know, if, we, if you provide us with the resources that we need to build this, we want to build this, we want to see if it will work. It was um, actually really shocking. I, I'm trained in medical anthropology, so I've been taught not to go into a place expecting a specific answer or expecting things to go the way that you want them to. You have to really listen to the community. So I went in there thinking, this is an idea that we've been working on for a while, but I have no idea if it's actually going to be ap applicable in this place or if people will even want it. So when the response was overwhelmingly positive, I was almost like, what? what's going on? People want to do this. This is really exciting. Um, it's an idea that we had all the way across the world and it's actually going to work here. We actually were, managed to put up um, three prototypes just in one week. Um, and I'm in communication with the translator and the partners with whom I worked and apparently they're still up and running and the plants are growing really well. Hopefully the plan is that we can make these um, cheap enough and easy enough to manufacture that we can just mass produce them and um, be able to distribute them easily. I think the extent of my global health awareness was limited to concepts of like Doctors Without Borders um, and things that were much more superficial in understanding. I knew that it was something I cared about, but I don't think I really had a full comprehension for the impact and the extent that um, global health takes in the world. Um, and being able to be at Harvard and work on projects like this and and take these classes is has just completely transformed my world.